I don't know how much you follow the news, but this incident is everywhere. While I was watching the incident, I was emotionally exhausted. Maybe there are some friends who do not know the incident. Let me share it briefly. There is a submarine called Titan belonging to the Ocean Gate company. Think of it as a capsule about 7 meters long. It goes under the sea with 5 people inside to a depth of 3,800 meters. Despite all that underground pressure, this device goes down with 5 people inside. What is their purpose? To observe the remains of the Titanic, the largest ship of its time. They are going on such a journey to observe that wreckage. Of course, it's not for free. It costs $250,000 per person. Five rich people get on. One of them is a billionaire, the others are millionaires. It seems so strange to me. For example, if I had a billion or million dollars, would I pay $250,000 to go under the sea and just observe the Titanic? I wouldn't. And it's also a very risky thing. I mean, with those millions, you can get many other pleasures in the world in a different way without risk. When you're under the ground, if the slightest factor goes wrong, all your billions of dollars in the bank will be gone, meaning you will go under the ground. It's really interesting that they try these kind of activities. I thought how they felt when they first went under the sea. You are a very privileged person, you are taking your first steps, you are going inside the submarine. You will go kilometers under the sea and see the Titanic in its place. Very exciting, very privileged. They probably called their relatives and loved ones and said, I'm going now, I'm very excited, completely unaware of what is going to happen. Maybe they were smiling, they were excited, they were experiencing such a different thing. But after 1 hour and 45 minutes, the connection goes down. First possible scenario was that they will run out of oxygen. Imagine you have billions of dollars in the bank. You can do everything in the world. There's nothing stopping you. But inside a submarine, you run out of breath. So if it would cost a million dollars to buy just one breath, you would have given away. Maybe there were plans. There were business meetings. Things on the calendar that had to be done. A very important meeting next week. But none of them matters. You just want a breath. Of course, the rescue operation begins. They search over 20,000 square kilometers. They use the latest technologies. Multi-million rescue operation begins. Television channels, especially in the United States, this is constantly on the TV. I mean, since the people down there are billion dollar, million dollar people, an extra rescue operation starts. But the last news I heard was that pieces of submarine have been found. It's predicted that there was a sudden and strong explosion happened. Around this time, I came across another post like this. Five rich people and a multi-million rescue operation. But on the other side, there are refugee people from Tunisia who want to start a new life in Europe. They are tired of poverty and want to live like a normal person in Europe. They don't ask to live in a luxury. They call for help while they are drowning in the ocean waves and they are not being helped. There are 750 missing people on one side and 5 missing people on the other side. By the way, this is not the only refugee incident. It happens repeatedly. Maybe today 100 refugees will drown in the ocean with their children and we won't hear anything. It's not newsworthy. European countries will again be indifferent to this. I saw a news report that made me feel terrible. Let me tell you about it. It was a news report about fishermen. A fisherman says... Refugee bodies are caught in my nets. And also, a fisherman says that he bursts into tears when the bodies of the babies come out of that net. Another fisherman says, I've seen 15 bodies pulled out of the water in three days. Another fisherman says, at first it seemed very strange to me. I was horrified. Then it started happening so much that it started to seem normal to me. And now in one area of Tunisia, there's a cemetery of refugees and there are empty holes. This means that everyday people come and they bury these unidentified people. You know, there's a migration from Africa, from the Middle East to Europe. There's war, there's poverty in the Middle East. There's serious poverty in Africa. People want to go to Europe and live like a normal people. They don't ask, let's live a rich life, a luxury life. They just ask, my child can't sleep at night because he's hungry. 
I want him to eat something. So why is there such a thing? Those people do not admire Europe, do not admire those countries. They know the difficulties of living in that culture. They know that they will have difficulties because they will be separated from their families. They don't know their language. They don't know their religion. They don't have any idea about what kind of culture is that. They just want to live like a normal person. So how will this be solved? How will it stop? Will the European countries finally say, okay, we cannot prevent you from entering our country. Let's create good employment there. Live like a normal person, be happy there, and don't come to our countries. Is it going to be solved like this? Brothers, sisters, think about it. There are about 850 million people in the world who are struggling with hunger. They are saying, will I be able to feed my child? Some countries, some communities, even they don't have the reach to water. I searched on the internet to see how much is needed annually. If each of these people are given $500 a year, hunger problem will be eliminated. That's about $425 billion. Brothers, think about it. How much technology is spent to go to space? How many problems are solved? Why can't they worry about these people as much as they worry about space? There are many countries, many companies that can provide this need. Above all, they should stop exploiting these countries. Even in this way, a serious part of the problem can be solved. Don't exploit them. Create employment, opportunities for them. And those people will stop coming to your country. Islam brought a very big rule that can handle this hunger and poverty problem. It is called zakat. When this system was practiced in the Ottoman period or in different Islamic states in the past, the results were great. You can research it on Google. Imagine that this rule is being applied. One out of 40 of the earnings are given to the poor people. The world would be such a beautiful place. Can you imagine a world like this? There's no poo. Everybody has good conditions, equal conditions. I checked Twitter. Millions of tweets have been sent about this submarine. But on the other hand, about these refugees, aren't they human beings? If you don't feel mercy for the people, don't you also feel mercy for their babies? These thoughts are really too heavy for human beings. I wanted to do something for this situation. I wanted to say something. I thought maybe we could be a means of raising awareness in this video. I wanted to explain how Europe, which does this colonialism, actually contradicts itself. On the one hand, you exploit people, you make them poor, then they come to your country because the resources are running out, and you say no. And then people drown in the sea, they ask for help, you don't care. It's not newsworthy. Then five people die under the sea, the whole media rises up. This seemed like a very ironic event to me. That's all I want to say. Inshallah, one day, we will be able to build a world where 8 billion people can live in justice, where there is equality in the distribution of income, where no mother has to worry about whether her child will go hungry today or not. May Allah grant it to us, Inshallah. Mm -hmm.